Cold at the touch, dead in the eyes. No signs of life, no more high. Put your love under the knife. Leave me to die here all alone. No signs of life, no more, no. A crying dove may never fly. Just let me go, it's only right for all I know It's only matter, it's calico, it's black and white White, white, white Just let me go, it's only right for all I know It's only matter, it's calico, it's black and white White, white, white Hello race fans, Peter Mackay here, welcoming you to Autodromo Enzo e Dino Ferrari for rounds 5 and 6 of the Porsche Club of Great Britain Sim Racing Championship. Joining me in the commentary box this evening is the wonderful Jack Werrell. Jack, you're standing in for uh, 
our very own ja Chaz Draycott tonight. How are you feeling heading into this one tonight? Um, well, first of all, thank you very much, and, and hello, everybody. I'm feeling nervous, to be honest, because the last time I was in the commentary box uh, with uh, with you and with everybody here for, uh, for Porsche Club Sim Racing Championship was um, was the last round of Season 1, and if tonight is, uh, is going to be something of the sort, if not even better, from what I've seen so far this season, we're in for one busy, busy night. And with uh, Formula One coming here with the 30, on the 31st and the 1st of November, we just need to add one of our own little events here before we uh, before we can hand it off to Formula One. And obviously, this is the one everybody's looking forward to. Nobody cares about Formula One. We've got rounds five and six of the Porsche Club GB Sim Racing Championship here for you this evening, Peter. And you've been in from uh, from day one, pretty much. Um, what do you think here is going to be the biggest challenge for the drivers tonight? Because it's a tricky circuit, as we've seen already. It's very hard. Yeah, I mean, we uh, my commentate on another Porsche Carrera Cup uh, a championship called the Porsche Sport Carrera Cup and involves some of the very top drivers in this car anywhere in the world, and they found it very tough as well. So uh, Imola, a notoriously difficult circuit, very, very technical, a lot of fast corners as well. So it's going to be really fun uh, to watch uh, and well... Uh, although although we've missed you the last few uh, the last few rounds, Jack, as you can see, not an awful lot changes with Ryan Parkins at the top of the field. But it, uh, it, nothing has changed, and everything has changed, if you like. Um, Ryan is still um, right up there at the top, but he is joined with a number of new challengers. We've got Matt Dorrington all season, uh, and well, he has been a constant threat to Ryan Parkins, and both of them have traded wins so far. Um, but we've also got some new uh, some new faces as well. Gary Tall, he's up there uh, as well. And we've got the return of Carl Sharkey tonight as well. So there's plenty of um, you know plenty of new protagonists, and also Dan Bathy in the uh, in the Sacred Coffee Porsche. He has been the revelation of the season so far. Yeah, from what I've seen, it's been a, a very very close season, even closer than season one, if that's even possible. But yeah, like you say, it's uh, it's a weird one because a lot has changed. But at the same time, on the face of it, very little. Because like you say, that man there, Ryan Parkins, has been uh, has been leading the way for a lot of it, and he's always had the legs in these uh, in these Porsche 911 Cup cars. Um, but Matt Dorrington, season one, obviously only sitting in for a little bit of it. I can only imagine how close these two are going to be racing. And like you say, we've got a new face. I've never seen him before. Gary Tall in the stand up to can delivery. He. Uh, He's looking fairly competitive tonight. And then Paul Riga, somebody who season one, he was getting just sort of testing the waters, really. We saw he was there or thereabouts going into the latter part of the season. But he's really on it this season, isn't he? He, he was, yeah. And of course, won in race two last time out at Silverstone. And at his second win uh, in Porsche Club of Great Britain, Sim Racing. And uh, well, if Paul can get away cleanly, he's he's got excellent pace and uh you know, we've seen him. Uh, we've seen him take get both of his wins in the uh, reverse grid race, uh, where it does get really spicy indeed. But he's in a good grid spot right now, currently sitting in fifth spot. But uh, look at that time from Ryan Parkins: one forty-three point seven six nine, just one tenth of a second behind him is Matthew Dorrington. And you look at the delta back to James Cummings: a whole one point two seconds back. So Ryan and uh, and Matt in their own uh, <laughs> in their own universe at the moment, and I suspect that for Ryan, Ryan's a big big fan of the uh, the Imola circuit and uh, really really enjoyed the preparation for uh, the visit that the Porsche Sport Carrera Cup uh, had to Imola and really really enjoyed it there and had a good result there too. Uh, and I suspect that's just carrying over. And uh, this is actually quite unusual to see Ryan and Matt being so far ahead of the field. That hasn't been the uh, the run of things up to now. No, it, it really just shows that when these two get the bit between the teeth and they've decided maybe battling door to door, it, although it looks amazing and sounds even better with these beautiful flat six Porsches, it's only going to slow them down. I think they've, they've just got their head down for the moment. And albeit it is qualifying it does show you that they're, they're going to be really competitive during the race and if this is a two horse race out the front I can only imagine what's going on towards the tail end of the order because you can see side by side cars on the grass and qualifying just behind it just shows how hard the drivers are having to push for every ounce of um, of of speed in these in these cars and I had a bit of an incident in the background wow that's very close for Luke Holroyd nearly collecting the uh, the tail end 
of one of the cars in front. And there's a load of new names that I haven't seen, but I'm assuming a load of new names means a load of new liveries. And we've always said, no matter what livery you make, it tends to look good on these cars. And just going off the, the first few that I've seen, it's a very, very pretty field this season, isn't it? There is indeed. Yeah, we've got a couple of really good ones. We've got the, uh, as you see on the screen here, uh, the number 12 machine blinds to go. Now, uh, last time out, Chaz and I, this is Byron Crawford. We were trying to um, guess what blinds to go is. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, I'm sure you've been there, Jack. I mean, I know you, you go out and about with, with your dad to the, the racetrack. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you uh, you just, you know, if you're in the hotel and you have those really thin curtains, maybe it's like a portable blind you can bring with you to... <laughs> To, to stop the light shining in if you're in a dodgy hotel room. Yeah, maybe. I, I'm stumped with that one as well. I'm not 100% <laughs> sure. Personally, I've never needed a, a portable blind, but I'm sure uh, there's there's a use for one, evidently. We'll have to uh, we'll have to speak to Byron to find out uh, what uh, what they are. Another new name, Mark Johnson. We, we were looking at him earlier in the gulf-coloured uh, machine with the novice cross on the tail end, but you wouldn't be able to tell off his performance so far. Currently in P11. So definitely, uh, definitely up there with uh, with some pace, and he's doing a, a, a pretty good job handling that Porsche quite well around Imola. Yeah, and that's a beautiful take on the uh, the the very famous blue kind of duck egg blue and orange colours of the uh, Gulf Oil Company. And yeah, I really like the uh, black accents on there as well. That is an excellent looking uh, paint scheme. But you uh, you'll be pleased to know, Jack, we've got a new Haribo car as well, Danny Jones, who now. Where is Danny? Oh, yes, oh. he has combined <laughs> Gulf and Haribo yes. in one livery. I mean, I, it's just, it's, I, 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 I don't even know what to say. I'm just, this, how cool is that? It can't get much cooler than that, surely. <laughs> we love at... his, uh, his Haribo car last season, but just, it's, it's brilliant because he's making two of the most iconic liveries, or one of the most iconic liveries on a Porsche, and then uh, his livery from season one he's merged them together and you'd think nah that, that doesn't work but it does it really really works I've got to say I am a fan of that I tell you what it's actually a really good this this could be a good tie up in the real world because if you think about it you stop when do you normally buy a packet of Haribo's in a petrol station so when you stop at a Gulf <laughs> petrol station you pick up yourself a, uh, a packet of Haribo you can indeed. That's uh, you'll have to you'll have to pitch that to Porsche get them uh, get their, their Gulf Haribo delivery Porsches out and about. RSRs, yeah. yeah. Oh, can you imagine? Can you oh. imagine? <laughs> <laughs> Another new name, though, Colin Wynn. And that livery, it, it just works. That wouldn't look out of place in a, in a real Porsche paddock. Neither would pretty much any of them. They all look perfect. And I, I'm not sure what it is, but these Porsches, any livery you slap onto them, they just, they just suit it. Well, our dear colleague, this particular one, number four, uh, <laughs> this infinite layers uh, paint scheme here, number four of Colin Wynn. Well, this is this was almost too much for for Chaz Draco. He, <laughs> he 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 went on. He started to talk about spec maps, and he, and he lost me almost instantly, Jack. Yeah, Whatever okay. they are, I still don't know what a spec map is. I just take I like taking the Mickey out of Chaz for it. <laughs> They're just incredibly complicated, and I, I've I've tried and given up many a time, and I don't think I'll ever understand truly how to how to get a spec map working properly. But when done correctly, they look absolutely amazing. This is Andrew Soper in the number 72, currently in 30th position, uh, respectively. He has set a 1 minute 50.12 on the lap prior. And he's running out of time to get a lap in. So there's only two minutes left of this 25-minute qualifying session. So the drivers really need to get their last-ditch efforts in here to try and get a good lap. And I'm seeing lots of uh, lots of names from from season one as well. And a lot of them are towards the pointy end of the order. Do you think experience is something that massively plays a part when you're driving these cars? Oh, without without a doubt, yes, uh, indeed. As we see. Uh, yeah, the, the, of course, the, the layout of these cars is quite unconventional compared to other race cars. It's very typically Porsche, f flat six engine, four litre mounted at the back of the car. And uh, that does give it quite a unique, um, a unique feel uh, and requires a lot of um, a lot of track time to, to get used to it. However, when you do master it, you often see drivers really stick to the car. They Once they master it, they love it. And uh, certainly, you know, guys like Ryan Parkins would certainly be um, would certainly be a good example of that, where he just absolutely loves this uh, this 911 GT3 Cup car because if you can master it, you can you can really get some some strong results. So yeah, I think the guys that have had the majority of track time 
uh, in the car will will really benefit. But also, um, you know, it's amazing if you've you've raced in quite a lot of um, sim racing leagues yourself, Jack. It's having a bit of experience of who the the runners and riders are and how they behave out on track, how they conduct themselves. Having that insider knowledge is vital. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more there. There's a, a few drivers I know from, from previous leagues, like you mentioned, that if I'm going to go for the overtake, I will maybe give them an extra an extra car's width <laughs> just because you know you've got that extra bit of knowledge. And whether that's just because you don't have the trust in them yet, you haven't raced with them long enough, or they've got a bit of a, a history for, for getting their elbows out. But I think Ryan Parkins, the, the King Hippo himself, is the, the one that has got the best legacy to his name so far. You think Ryan Parkins, oh God, there you go. He's just disappeared into the distance. If I bet if I raced Ryan, I wouldn't even see him. And the first time I would, would be him coming around to lap me in my rearview mirror. He's insanely quick in these cars as the qualifying session flicks over. So I think that will bring us into race one. It will indeed. So I'm going to hand you over to Peter Mackay to rattle you through the grid. So let's see how they line up then for this opening race of the evening here at Imola. On pole position is Ryan Parkins by less than a tenth of a second from his championship rival, Matt Dorrington. That's going to be a cracking encounter indeed. Gary Tall, good qualifying from him, qualifying in third place alongside James Cummings. Paul Riga starts from fifth place with Mark Bernie Eccleston Phillips starting from sixth, followed by Johnny Elia and Caravan Carl Sharkey. Patrick Charlton rolls off from ninth alongside Mark Baxter Jones. Mark Bow starts from 11th alongside Mark Johnson, followed by Chris Bowie, Byron Crawford, Stuart Clark, Luke Holroy, Danny Jones, Oliver Carwoodine, Paul Stout, Carl Hazelton, Anrik Sash Dev, Angus Archer, Jules Gardner, Julian Noisey. And finally, Andrew Shepard, Ryan Penny, Colin Wynn, Mark Sell, Andrew Marson, Andrew Soper, and Jamie Ward. And just in time, the guys are clearly eager to get going. They're lining up on the grid. We will wait for the revs to rise, and we will be off for 20 minutes of racing here at Imola. This amazing circuit in the uh, east of Italy. Actually home to the San Marinese Grand Prix, even though it's actually not in San Marino. It's just close to it. As we're waiting for the last few cars to pop up, Ryan Parkins, he's there in in good order. Prompt, prompt, prompt Parkins, shall we say, uh, sitting alongside Matt Dorrington. So Ryan has the inside line for Tamburello, the opening left-right chicane. Here are the lights then. Revs are up, ready to unleash 485 horsepower. Four, five, Go, go, go here at Imola. And it's a rocket start from Brian Parkins. Matt Dorrington's bogged down and he's been swamped. He's gone back into the end of the top 10. Ryan Parkins gets through cleanly and look at Paul Riga. Paul Riga's into second place. There's Bernie Phillips in the whereby Porsche as well. He's up to third. He's battling with Johnny Elia side by side as they head down to the Villeneuve chicane. What a start, Jack. Yeah, an incredibly busy start for everybody involved. Ryan Parkins, though, leading out in front by almost a second. There's Paul Riga in second place. There's Gary Tall as well in third. And look how busy it is in the background. There's cars pretty much everywhere. Gary Tall, I think, might have had a slight incident. Carl Hazelton is continuing on. We've had a couple of cars gone off the road. Maybe that's just cars running wide. You can see tyre tracks through the gravel. That's our Villeneuve in the background. But it looks like everybody's still continuing on without too many issues a little bit further back. Everybody's still carrying on. Oh. No, they're not. Andrew Shepard hard into the tyre wall. I'm not sure what happened there, Peter. Oh, well, pink sky in the morning. Shepard's warning. Well, there's a, there's one there. Number 76. Bang! At the, uh, well, the, the Toza um, hairpin there. Oh, dear. Not a good start indeed. But Matt Dorrington, a disaster for him. He's now in fourth position. Now, uh, we also must make our viewers aware that new for this season is called the Orange Zone Rules. What that means is if you make contact and cause an incident with another driver on the opening lap, you must take an automatic drive-through penalty. And uh, we saw it executed last time out at Silverstone, Jack, and really improved the, uh, the lap one racing and much, much more allows the, the field to just spread out. And, well, Ryan Parkins, the King Hippo, he is galloping off at the front. And, well, he, Matt Dorrington's got some hard work to do if he wants to catch up with his championship rival here. 
He really does. He's got lots of points. And even look at this battle in the background. This is between Johnny Elia and Patrick Charlton on the run up towards Tamborello. Around the outside later on the breaks. He will might have to compromise his entry. And, well, he's oh. compromised his exit over the rough stuff. Loses one, two, maybe even three positions because there is Caravan Carl Sharkey on his way to work his way past. But look at the run. Mark Baxter James has got. He's trying to get two in one here. On the run up to Villeneuve, up the inside, maybe Mark Baxter Jones gives it a little look. Carl Sharkey oh, off the road. Oh. Wow. Oh dear. That was Caravan Carl there just putting a, a ten you know, a couple of percent of his Michelin tire onto the grass. Whoosh, round he goes, and lucky not to get tagged by Mark Baxter Jones. So oh the 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 caravan hook has been disconnected and caravan Carl Sharkey is off the track. Wow, what a what an eventful start. But Gary Tall up in third position, and he's holding off Matt Dorrington into Aqua Minerali. Up the hill they go then towards the Alta Chicane. This is a tight, tight chicane. Really difficult to get a move done, but Matt Dorrington looks like he might have a go. No, thinks better of it. Yeah, very close battling already. Matt Dorrington desperate trying to make up time for that. Poor start. Lost a little bit of time going through the chicane there. Hitting the curbs maybe slightly too hard throwing the car skywards it looks like we've had an incident for james cummings there he is off the road in his matte black porsche let's see what happened to james he went off the road once uh, so there we go through the chicane hit the curb too hard puts his foot to ah. the floor i think before the car could uh, deal with the forces going through it boots the loud pedal on the grass and gets it back going and gets it pointing the right way but this battle towards the front still not going out, going away look at this Matt Dorrington on the inside later on the brakes all the way into Tamborello and there you go grabs the apex position made for Matt Dorrington compromises his exit a little bit but he's carried that speed all the way through but Paul Riga he's going to be target number one for the moment he's had a good start up three positions from where he started trying to chase down Ryan Parkins who bear in mind is now four seconds up the road I think his, uh, his main priority for the moment is going to be holding back that Fury Simsport driver of Matt Dorrington. Yep, indeed. Yep, Paul Riga's definitely going to be looking back rather than forward at the moment. But I tell you what, big props to Matt Dorrington there. That was a beautifully clean move he pulled there on Gary Tall into Tamburello. And he's going around the outside here, gets it done at, uh, at Piratella and then down towards Ackerman Rally. So a really nice move there. It uh, looked like Paul Riga just ran a bit wide coming out of the toes of hairpin, but uh, um, got it done, and uh, he's off into the distance. Now now we're going to see just how much pace Matt Dorrington has and if he can haul in Ryan Parkins. They were absolutely inseparable on the time sheet, timesheets in practice, so we'll need to wait and see. I say you'll notice uh, the number eight car there of uh, Mark Baxter-Jones will love his livery. That's a classic Porsche livery. Uh, Va valent um they actually make central heating systems uh, and that was uh in the early 1980s that was a a, a livery we saw on a number of different racing porsches it is a beautiful livery noticed uh, noticed it on the thumbnail i think it was last week it is a, a, a beautiful piece of kit but not maybe as shiny as mark bow's race car at the moment in chrome and, and matte black not making it any quicker though because he's got mark johnson tucked underneath his rear wing on the run-up towards the start finish line crosses the start finish line now and look at that mark johnson looking to the left and the right decides to go the long way around maybe later on the brakes he's gonna pull out the move no jumps on the brakes a little bit earlier lifts off and pulls out of the move but he can't afford to lose too much time as you can see in the background stuart clark luke holroyd and danny jones has a little bit of a look there as well followed by byron crawford and then oliver carwardine desperate trying to make up even more places James Cummings he's had a rotten start after that incident 13 places down and he's under pressure from losing another because Paul Stout is looking to the inside on the run up towards Villeneuve later on the brakes and there you go another position made for Paul Stout but another position lost for James Cummings it's all come undone for him yeah not been good good start to the day for James Cummings um as we see oh a big battle going on here between Danny Jones and Luke Holroyd, well, we called him Sergeant Bash last time out because um, he was, well, for obvious reasons, in race two last time around, but uh, no such problems this time out. Luke Holroyd right on the back of the gearbox of Danny Jones here in the Gulf Harry boat machine. And they go through Aquamineralli nice and safely. Six minutes down in this race, and it's been an absolute cracker. And just... Uh, you know, you'll notice, Jack, just how uh, how close... Oh, Luke Holroyd's off. Luke Holroyd's had a spin, 
Oh dear, dear, dear. Let's get a look at that then. On the brakes then into the Alta Chicane and oh, just gets a hop and a skip and a jump over the curbs and oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Not what he was looking for. No, not what we wanted at all. You see it was going, going, going. Holds the brakes to try and keep it out the wall. Does a good job of that. Decides to go the safer way around. Does he just click the clutch to get it back going again? No, tries to find reverse. And I think eventually finds his way back to He's doing the an Austin track. Powers. Yeah, we'll go back live with him. And there he is now, right the way down the order in P26. And there is uh, Charles Gardner chasing him down now in towards the final few corners. But I think Luke Holroyd has got the position safe at the moment. Amrik Sachdev, another season one driver, returning to season two under pressure here from Carl Sharkey. Has a little bit of a little bit of a look up the inside. But the recovering number 77 couldn't get the position made there. But there's still battles going on up and down the order. Look at this in the background. I think that's Mark Johnson having a little look up the inside. No, that was Stuart Clark trying to get up the inside of Mark Johnson. Danny Jones following along. No, oh, Danny no. Jones following the grass into the wall. Let's have a look to see what happened there. Oh, dear. It's a bear with a sore head. As he comes around the toes of hairpin and just, yep. Typical Porsche 911 Cup car accident there. Just... Ask for the power that little bit early with that little bit too much steering lock on. And these cars, they are not very compliant when you, you ask them to do something they don't want to do. They can be quite fickle machines. That makes taming them all that more enjoyable. So quite a few drivers falling foul of the... This This is a brutally difficult circuit, Jack. I mean, this, so we've seen a number of drivers come a cropper over the curbs. And uh, you've just got to be so, so smooth. And over even over 20 minutes, it's pretty tough. It really is. It's a very challenging circuit. Like you can see there, very easy to lock up. Chris Bowie showing that off uh, beautifully into the penultimate corner. There's lots of undulation, not necessarily within corners, but you can see going up towards uh, or up on your way through sector two. There's lots of undulation through there. You go very high and then down in towards Aqua Minerale. And there's very big curbs as well. And it's quite a, 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 a different circuit compared to anything else because lots of high speed braking zones like this one in towards Tamburello but you've got to put a tiny bit of steering lock on as well which is the last thing you want to do when you're on the brakes especially in these cars but that's what you've got to do to uh, to get around a lap here so a very busy lap for everybody involved but Chris Bowie still leading this uh, three car train of Mark Bow and Mark Johnson is that Stuart Clark behind it? Is Stuart Clark sort of lost touch with this battle now? But the uh, this trio still fighting away. I say that, but Chris Bowie slowly starting to build a bit of a buffer. Nothing major, but a little bit here and there is starting to turn this two th this three car battle into a two car battle of Mark Bow and Mark Johnson. And I think these are the closest cars on circuit. I tell a lie because Danny Jones is now trying to get past Paul Stout. Yep, he is he's trying to recover from that earlier incident. Ooh, a wee bit of a nudge there to the back of Paul Stout. Uh, and, but he, he holds the position for now. Of course, Imola has been a part of, uh, well, it's been intertwined in motor racing for such a long time. The uh, When the initial foundations of the circuit were laid in 1950, Enzo Ferrari himself was in attendance as well. And would you believe, Jack, that the first... Formula One Grand Prix here, there were no Ferraris present at all. And that race was won by none other than Jim Clark in 1963. Well, of course, Jim Clark would win it. <laughs> Any race Jim Clark <laughs> rocked up to, he tends, he tends to win anyway. I want to have a look back at that battle there just to see how close that gets in a moment. But look at this, Carl Hazelton defending from Carl Sharkey. That we've seen Mark Bowen, and Mark Johnson stuck together. And now we've got Carl Hazelton and Carl Sharkey. But Carl. Well, I'm not going to say just Carl. The number 24 of Carl Hazelton runs slightly wide going through the penultimate corner. Carl Sharkey boots the throttle in excitement. And I think that just throws the car slightly sideways. He loses a bit of momentum onto the start-finish straight. But now on the run-up towards Tamburello of Turn 1, it's still Carl Hazelton leading Carl Sharkey. I think he will change the position a little bit further up the road as well. But let's see what Sharkey can do up the inside later on the brakes. He's had a look lap after lap after lap. Now... Here on lap seven, there you go, grabs the apex, gets the position made, and that's Carl Sharkey up into P16. I think we've got a couple of close cars in the background. We do indeed. That's uh, I think that's Brian Crawford that uh, has just managed to, uh, or Brian Crawford has just lost the position. No, I was right the first time around. Brian Crawford has managed to get past Andrew Soper, and to see, even though these guys aren't towards the pointy end of the field, to see some mid-pack and even bottom-pack battles, just it just sort of shows how competitive this championship is 
it has. Obviously, we've got an even bigger grid this year as well. If you look a, bit, a little bit further back towards the sharp end, Johnny Elia here, Mr. Ford Transit himself. His, I like his new paint scheme, although it does look like he's driven quite quickly through a puddle of Tipex uh, in, in, that, uh, in that car. So you see <laughs> the kind of white parts along the bottom of it, but very cool uh, paint scheme. He's holding off the advances of Patrick Charlton, who actually has a lot of real-world experience, actually raced in the uh, Lotus Elise Cup, Sport Cup about 20 years ago and actually uh, uh, rubbed fenders with uh, a 1990s boy band heartthrob, none other than Shane Lynch of Boyzone fame. <laughs> I'm going to say they are slightly out of my generation, but I do recognise the name, <laughs> thankfully. Um, so I, I finally got one of your references, Peter, but now look, he's being dragged into the mix. It's Mark Phillips, currently in fourth position, but Johnny Elia has been getting slowly closer and I think he's been dragging Patrick Charlton with him as well. We've got a change of position in the background. That's James Cummings, I think, losing out to Mark Bowe. I think it could have been the other way around, actually. Looking at it, we've had an incident for Mark Sell. Multiple incidents for Mark Sell. Let's have a look back to see what happened here. Ooh, into the side of another car and then oh, oh, flipped. Oh, dear. Through, uh, oh, nice through landing, though. Yeah. Sticks the landing very nicely indeed. Using the, I tell you what, he's he's running at what is now quite a well-known livery, the BWT water livery, which we see on uh, in on some of the Porsche Super Cup cars and, of course, on the uh, Racing Point cars. Uh, but uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen a bottle of BWT water before. Have you? No, I've got to say I haven't. Um, and when I was doing a bit of prep for, for tonight, Aqua Minerale, I think that should be a, a, a mineral water brand. It just sounds, uh, Aqua Minerale, mineral water, there you go. I'm going to uh, well, get that trademarked. It, it, that actually uh, that actually translates directly in Italian to really difficult and, well, really horribly difficult corner. <laughs> <laughs> it is a horrible corner, that. Well, it is, I say, it's lovely when you get it right, but... Uh, now, looking at this, Johnny Elia, they're trying to look at his helmet design here. That looks to me quite similar to a Jason Cueto helmet design. Sadly, can't quite get the angle. For can't it. quite tell. We must ask him when we get the chance to see if that's a. It looks it's got that kind of red and blue kind of uh, design around it, but we'll, we'll, we'll find out, I'm sure. But, uh, Mark, good drive, for best drive of the season so far from uh, Mark Phillips, the, the Bernie Eccleston of Porsche Club of Great Britain Sim Racing, running a new paint scheme this year for his uh, employer, whereby a new type of video conferencing software, which you can use, which is obviously very relevant right now with most people working from home. So if you want to set up new video call, oh, Elia spun, Elia spun in the background. Oh, Oh, t sorry to interrupt the whereby advert there for Johnny Elia. Oh, dearie me. Patrick Charlton nearly catches him there. Yeah, finally gets uh -huh. going in front of, I think that was uh, Chris Bowie that streamed by, but not what we wanted to see for uh, for Johnny Elia. He might lose another position here to Stuart Clark, who's hot on his heels. Danny Jones has got his hands full with Paul Stout in towards Villeneuve around the outside. You don't want to go oh. too wide through there. We've seen going through there by yourself is very much a task, but he kept the position on the way in. Can he keep it on the way out? Great defensive driving from Danny Jones, placing the car exactly where he needs to, but runs slightly wide on the exit. Here comes Paul Stout now, tucked underneath the rear wing once again. And these two glued together once Great racing. again. Yeah, two very iconic liveries. But I want to have a look back up at the front. 4.6 seconds is the lead gap between Ryan Parker and Matt Dorrington. And Matt Dorrington's pulled an 8.8, .8, best part of nine second gap over Paul Riga. So Matt Dorrington, he's on a mission trying to catch up to Ryan Parkins. But Ryan has just got that extra bit of time in the bag, which I think is going to keep him safe for the moment. Yeah, and that was all to do with the start. I mean, Ryan had that gap uh, before he had that gap made where before Matt managed to get his way through to second position um so you can see matt dorrington's got a tiny bit of damage on the front left of that car as well not much i'm sure it won't be affecting him too much but in, but you know um just a little bit he needs everything in his power to catch ryan parkins but yeah that was all sort of sealed up in the opening lap because ryan parkins he absolutely slingshotted that car off the line and matt dorrington on the other hand just bogged down and he got completely swamped yeah, it's, it's such a difficult task to get one of these cars off the line quickly. Or well, get one of these cars off the line at all is uh, is very much a task. But if you can do it quickly, 
Yeah, definitely more than talented. And we saw lots of different tricks and uh, tips and tricks uh, in season one on how to get these cars off the line. And like, like we've seen tonight, Ryan Parkins has very much nailed it. Mike Barrington, like I say, bogging down. And he got swarmed by, it seemed like, thousands of 911 Cup cars um, in his mirrors alongside him and on, on the way up towards turn one. And that just shows how competitive the field is. You may be a couple of seconds quicker in qualifying, but if you make a bad start, you've then got all that work to do to uh, to get back up to where you need to be. Who's that? Uh, just pulling over. I think that's Mark, Mark Searle trying to get out of the way. We've still got this little battle going on. Byron Crawford not managing to shake off the attentions of Shields Gardner. And then you've got Andrew Soper trying to catch up as well. Yeah, he's uh, he's got a bit of damage there at the front and has Andrew Soper. I'm just looking at the outright lap times. Ryan Parkins has the fastest lap of the race. 1 minute 44.17. Matt Dorrington, 1 minute 44.20. So there's... <laughs> three thousandths of a second uh, sorry three hundredth my apologies uh between the two so they are very evenly matched on pace but as you rightly said jack all to do with that start uh, but of course it's completely flipped on its head quite literally for the for the uh, second race where of course we have our infamous reverse grid race and we know how tricky those reverse grid races are and we see a lot of action at the beginning here at imola that will just be magnified but I think I, you know, I was saying this on the broadcast two weeks ago, Jack, that, that I think that's where Ryan Parkins won his championship last season because in the feature race, sorry, in the feature, in the second race on the reverse grid, that was where he kept himself out of trouble. And that was the critical thing, was not getting involved in incidents when all of his other rivals did. Yeah, I think that is just the, the best way to sum it up, really. It's all about damage limitation in these cars. And like, like we've said all evening, this field is closer than it's ever been. So any little mistake and any few points lost in the early part of the season is going to almost double or triple the damage going into the latter part of the season. And like you say, yeah, Ryan Parkins, he kept it clean. We never really saw Ryan in any major incidents. If he had to back off a couple of tenths, maybe even a second a lap to keep out of trouble, he always used to do that. And I think, yeah, that's, uh, that's what won him the championship in season one. And he's clearly had a charge to win the championship in season two and like you like you briefly mentioned we've still got that reverse grid race to go and one name that stands out for me it, for reverse grid races from season one is this man here Amrik Sachdev he's got the attentions of Danny Jones at the moment but one position lost in race one or in heat one will be one position gained at the start for uh, for heat two but Amrik Sachdev he always seemed to maybe fall off the pace a little bit at the start of uh, at the start of race one last season but race two he came alive didn't he he did, yeah, and, but he was so unlucky so many times. We saw him getting tagged and put into the barrier, um, no fault of his own a lot of times. So, uh, yeah, really, he was really unlucky in season two. But running a steady race here uh, in race one here at Imola, we have ticked over the 20-minute mark. So where is our leader, Ryan Parkins? And he is, yep, on the final lap. And he's actually, wow, in a 20-minute race, he's lapping and getting through the field. That is that's extraordinary uh, how fast he is. We haven't seen that for quite some time, actually. Seen uh, a lot of lap traffic. So Ryan will just need to be very, very careful here. There's Matt Dorrington in the back of the shot. So not long to go. Just a few corners coming down towards Rivaza, and, uh, which sounds like a pizza shop and probably is. Uh, Rivaza comes down this very tricky double left-hander here. And you can see Ryan is just taking it very careful. He's got plenty of time in hand, has the King Hippo. As you see, the Hippo on the side of his car on the rear flank there. So Ryan Parkins then is your winner here in the opening race here at Imola in the Porsche Club of Great Britain Sim Racing Championship. A beautiful drive from pole position and edges out Matt Dorrington. Another blow to Ryan Parkins in this championship battle. Excellent drive as well from Paul Riga. Gets onto the podium on merit, not a reverse grid race here, gets a properly good finish. And Mark Phillips, Bernie himself, gets into fourth place. And uh, I'm sure Bernie's loyal pooch, Ernie, will be very happy indeed watching the broadcast. Mark Baxter-Jones comes home in sixth spot. Good drive from him. And Chris Boy in seventh. Yeah, a very good drive from all involved. A couple of people that I think 
uh, had a couple of unlucky incidents, but the incident in race one might set them up quite well for uh, for heat two. Gary Tall, Carl Sharkey, and Byron Crawford, I think, are all going to have some uh, some better luck in heat two. We have had an incident for Byron Crawford, I think, earlier on that we didn't quite catch. Here it is. So let's see what happened. This is through Villeneuve, I think. Does he run slightly wide on the grass? Yep. And there you go. Stamps on the brakes to get it slowed down. Flings it the opposite way to, to the way I thought he would go, but um, continues on nonetheless, which is why I think he has returned to the pit lane. He has indeed, and everybody is just coming around. I think that's everybody completed their laps. Oh, nearly contact as we've crossed the line. <laughs> but I think we may end up with some results for you. So, Peter, run us through the finishing order. So, this is how they finish then for round five. <laughs> or Evidently go on, not. Jack. <laughs> Evidently not. We don't have the results just as yet. We'll just have to wait for everybody to return to the pit line, I think. Um, Andrew Shepard, is he yet to finish? Yeah, this is why. Andrew Shepard, everybody, crossing the line in P30. And, Peter, there we go. We now have some results for you. Excellent. Andrew Shepard guides his Porsche home to the finish. So this is how they finished then in round five of the Porsche Club of Great Britain Sim Racing Championship. Brian Parkins wins by 2.7 seconds from Matt Dorrington. Running out the podium was Paul Riga, an excellent drive from him in the number seven car, and Mark Phillips, his best run of the season as well, in fourth spot. Patrick Charlton finished in fifth place, followed by Mark Baxter-Jones, Chris Bowie, Stuart Clark, Johnny Elia, and Oliver Carwoodeen. Mark Johnson finished 11th, followed by James Cummings, Gary Tall, Mark Bow, and Amri Sashdev. Danny Jones in the Harry Bow car was 16th, followed by Paul Stout and Carl Hazelton. In 19th spot was Carl Sharkey, Caravan Carl. He'll have a pretty good grid position then for the, the, the race two. Watch out for him. Behind him will be Luke Holroyd in 20th, followed by Angus Archer. Andrew Soper, Gilles Gardner, Ryan Penny, Julian Noise, Byron Crawford, Andrew Marston, and finally, Colin Wynn rounds out our 28 strong field here in the Porsche Club of Great Britain Sim Racing Championship. So, the drivers will now have a very quick warm up session while we have a bit of a cool down and uh, we'll be ready to go for race two very, very shortly indeed. Now, uh, Jack, your predictions for race two? Um, even closer than race one, I think, because um, all the guys that finished well in race two will have that uh, that bit of fire in their belly trying to get back up through the order. And that is, uh, that's no mean feat. And obviously the start as well, we saw it in race one with Matt Dorrington. The start is going to be so key and he's going to be kicking himself so, his self for that. But that might be playing on his mind as well. He's got to make sure he nails this start to stay in front of Ryan Parkins because he'll be on the same row, the back row, and if you uh, if he loses that position at the start, it's going to be a very very busy race for him because he wants to catch overtake Brian Parkins while getting through traffic as well. So very busy race on the way. Certainly will be. So as you can see, a few drivers taking the opportunity to just get a little bit of a warm up before we head into this uh, sixth round already. Goodness of the uh, Porsche Club of Great Britain Sim Racing Championship. A few different circuits for our drivers to get their head around this season. We kicked off at Barcelona four weeks ago at the Circuit de Catalunya, and two weeks ago we were at Silverstone, but this time at the Silverstone International layout. So uh, very much a different feel to the season as well. And I have to say, I am very excited indeed for when the championship goes to Road Atlanta, one of my favorite circuits. And, uh, Good to see the uh, the championship going stateside, Jack, for for uh, for a nice fresh, uh, a nice bit of fresh uh, interest in the series. Yeah, definitely, uh, lots of uh, of good fast action on the way, and as always, the Porsche Club GB Sim Racing Championship will not disappoint. But like we've already mentioned, these drivers or the the drivers are just going to have a bit of a warm up while we're going to have a bit of a break, and we'll be back with you for round six of the Porsche Club GB Sim Racing Championship season two in just a few moments' time. Don't go away.
Championship. This is our reverse grid race where we've just been treated to a fantastic sprint race for 20 minutes. We're now going to have another one here around this wonderful twisty technical circuit. So our drivers will be lining up shortly. Let's see how they line up for this race. Pole position will be Mark Searle alongside Andrew Shepard, Jamie Ward, Colin Wynn, Andrew Marston, Byron Crawford, Julian Nose, Ryan Penny, Jules Gardner, Andrew Soper, Angus Archer and Luke Holroyd. As we actually hear the revs rising, I think we're about good to go here. You'll see their riders there. Four, five, go, go, go again here at Imola. It's a brilliant start there from Shepard in the white, blue and black machine. He makes his way down to Tamburello. Mark Sell in the 777 pink machine there goes in very, very gently. Everyone just taking their time. Oh, we've got somebody off in the background there. Who was that? That's one of the Porsche factory colored machines. We'll get back to it on that one. But more or less, the field get through cleanly. You say that, but that's Ryan Penny oh, in the middle of the oh road. Gosh. I think oh. he might have had a massive hit in the wall there looking at the state of his car. Let's have a look. I think it was this initial incident. So this is coming out of Tamburello. Ooh, snaps almost, snaps the other into the wall very hard. Does the best he can to get out of the way. And I think he does a pretty good job of that. And everybody continues on. I think that car will be feeling very second-hand. He might have had another incident by the looks of that because it's oh, sideways Shepherd in the dog. road. Let's see what happened. This is an incident with Danny Jones. All oh, there's cars everywhere. I'm not sure what happened there. Let's have a look back, Peter. <laughs> Oh, and then Mark wow. Bernie Phillips getting caught up there as well. Shepard's off. Mark Stirl's off. Oh, my word. There's some very upset-looking Porsche 911 Cup cars here. And Paul Stout and Danny Jones both spinning off in uh, almost synchronized fashion. And then Danny Jones piles back onto the circuit. And that causes a real chain reaction. Oh, very close indeed. Now, what we need to know is if our championship contenders, Ryan Parkins, and Matt Dorrington got through cleanly. Uh, it looks to me that they have. There's Ryan Parkins. Uh, oh, no, that's sorry, that's Carl. There he is. There's uh, Ryan Parkins. He's in 22nd spot right now. So just picking his way through cleanly. Uh, and uh, Matt, you, Matt Dorrington, he's up to ninth. So really good start from Matt Dorrington. Yeah, really flipped the championship on its head as that incident has put Matt Dorrington right the way up towards the front end of the order. You can see him now up into P8. We've got a couple of cars back into the pit lane, I believe. Hiding on the run up towards Tamburello. He decides to pull out of the move to that one. There's a car sideways in the middle of the road up uh, a little further up. That is Jamie Ward in the Michelin-sponsored machine, the number 82. He's got to wait for the freight train of cars to come streaming through turn one, position after position, disappearing. Slipping through his fingers, he's gone from, what, P4 right the way down to P26 in the space of one corner. One little incident. Uh, it's so painful having to sit there and watch. Oh, oh he, Carl Hazelton's off in the wall. He spears into the tyre barrier. Ah, what a pity. There goes Mark Phillips going by as well. Ryan Parkins just on the inside, trying to give as much room as he can. And, oh, Carl Hazelton tips around. Andrew Marston in the pink pig. Oh, dear, dear, dear. This has been a messy start to the race. And, well, what we've come to, sometimes not to expect, but what we've become used to, I suppose in the reverse grid race and oh dear me bit unlucky there for andrew marston yeah not what we like to see but we've still got battles raging away this is for second place looking at colin Wynn in the number four machine you can see luke colroyd in the background throwing the car over the curbs and he might even pick up a position from that we saw him have an incident at the chicane in race one but now into race two the feature race he's up into second position gained 10 positions from where he started apparently he has indeed. So has our leader, Angus Archer. He's up 10 positions from where he started. Luke Holroyd will be desperate to try and, to try and get back up towards the front, and he's doing a great job of that. Look at the gap he's already built up to Colin Wynn, who's got the attention of Brian Crawford and Carl Sharkey. And look at that, Matt Dorrington up into sixth position. And if he, if he plays his cards right and keeps it clean, he could be almost onto a podium position already. Yeah, he's looking good. Ryan Parkins uh, still back in 12th, so this is advantage. Matt Dorrington, as far as the championship battle, is concerned. Carl Sharkey right there as well, but brilliant start from Luke Holroyd. Uh, brilliant job indeed to get up to second spot, but also Angus Archer avoiding. Oh, and Gary Tolls in the wall. 
Oh dear, dear, dear. But Angus Archer, of course, uh, a real world racer in the Porsche Club of Great Britain. Uh, delivery. Oh, he gets turned around by. Wow, by Amrik Sashtev. Oh dear, dear. That is the fastest point on the circuit. And, well, that is Gary Toll's race over. Um, well, well, well. What a start to this reverse crude race here at Imola. We had a suspicion it was going to be pretty frantic and that has proved to be the case but yes coming back to Angus Archer the livery on his car is an identical uh, well it's a replica of his uh, real world Porsche Boxster racing car which he races in the Porsche Club of Great Britain real world racing championship so uh, he's off to a really good lead right now can he hang on to it well looks like Matt Dorrington will be on the scene sooner rather than later he's now right onto the back of Luke Holroyd so Matt Dorrington definitely on the charge in this one as you can see him slowly putting the pieces together to try and get up towards the lead and he's doing all the right things at the moment getting closer and closer very close to the tail end now is Matt Dorrington he will have the, the draft assistance down the massive front straight you can see he's carried the momentum through the final corner he looks to the right and then looks to the left round the outside for the moment but that will give him the inside for Tamburello of turn one you can see he's almost there or thereabouts as he crosses the line watch for the position change on your left hand side there it goes Matt Dorrington in front and the position is everything but secure there we go on the brakes and up into second position for Matt Dorrington looking back at Ryan Parkins though he's got to get through this massive pack there's cars off the road I think that's Colin Wynn uh, off the track at Tamburello but there's Mark Baxter Jones trying to keep up with Ryan Parkins then there's Johnny Ely who he's got to try and negotiate as well you saw Johnny just dab the brakes he knows who's coming through Ryan Parkins up another position up into P6 but with his championship rival up in second position he's got a lot of work hasn't he he does indeed yes and uh, you see Byron Crawford taking a lot of damage there's a lot of damp front damage at the front of that car so he moves out the way that's in a, a much easier pass for Ryan Parkins he's up into fifth place right now next up for him will be Carl Sharkey yeah Byron Crawford's blinds to go Porsche is uh, is not looking so good I noticed in uh, in the break there Jack in the YouTube comments that uh, season one uh, podium finisher uh, Austin Greatrex has actually ordered his blind he's ordered some new blinds from blinds to go so uh, uh, good, good to see Austin supporting some series sponsors it is indeed, and I think, just looking at that, speaking of Byron Crawford, he's the only driver to still be in the position he started. Even with that damage, he started in sixth, and he's still in sixth position, and he's pulling away from Johnny Elia as well. I think that's just because he's got his mirrors full of the number eight machine of Mark Baxter-Jones, and then Paul Riga working his way through the order, a megastar from Paul Riga of 20 positions. So is Mark Phillips. I'm just looking at it now. The top 15 have all gained positions. Angus Archer make that Matt Dorrington now in the lead. Up 29 positions from the back row of the grid. Matt Dorrington now in the lead with Ryan Parkin still in fifth position. This is exactly what he wanted. Up 29 positions. Angus Archer up nine. Carl Sharkey up 10. Luke Holroyd up eight. And Ryan Parkin's up 26. I will bring the gains up on the left-hand side of your screen. So have a look over there. You can see just the position gains for everybody. It's been a very fruitful race for everybody in the top 15. Has indeed. Yep, yeah, and there was a lot of guys where their race was over before it really began, but uh, Ryan Parkins up to fifth spot right now. But yeah, what a drive. Four laps, 29 positions gained for Matt Dorrington and avoiding all of that chaos as well. And it looks, yeah, looks like he's got through there completely unscathed. That car looking absolutely perfect right now. And this is what we saw in race one. The only difference really between Ryan Parkins and Matthew Dorrington was their uh, was their respective starts. And Ryan got an excellent start. Matt got a terrible start. Now, the kind of roles have been reversed a little bit as Jamie Ward has a little bit of an incident. But yeah, I think that this, we know how close on pace Ryan Parkins and Matt Dorrington are. So Ryan is going to have to pull something extra out the bag if he wants to try and catch Matt and uh, challenge him for the win. Yeah, he definitely needs to find something else. We saw Matt Dorrington was there or thereabouts on pace in race one. And now in the feature race, Matt Dorrington has got clean air. 
and very little traffic in front of him. Whereas we look at Ryan Parkins, he's basically part of Luke Holroyd's car at this point. Never mind Caravan Carl. We've got Caravan Ryan at the moment stuck to the tail end of Luke. And I've got a feeling that those positions might swap on the run up towards turn one because we know Ryan will have the draft assistance and maybe slightly more confident on the brakes. He's changing position a little further up the road as well. Ryan Parkins up another position up into fourth. Angus Archer dropping back now because that's Carl Sharkey up into P2. So Carl Sharkey up 11 positions. Gavin Hall's in the chat saying, just got home, sad I missed the race tonight. Good luck, guys. It's a shame we're missing you, Gavin. It would be great to see you out on the road. I'm so sure we'll see you next time. Albert Ryan Parkins in the background up another position. So Ryan Parkins on the podium, on the podium place. Oh, Angus moment. Archer's off. Let's have a look oh, back Angus, see what happened there. Oh, Angus Archer's off at the back and he's taking a toe to pit lane. And uh, Mark Baxter Jones has a crash behind him going through. Now, where is this? This is Villeneuve, I think. Yes, and just spins off slowly and takes the toe to pit lane. And Mark Baxter Jones, you'll see, did the same behind him. So, ah, what a shame for Angus Archer. That was a really strong run up to that point. But, uh, oh, not to be, um, sadly. So... Ryan Parkins next will have, I tell you what, Carl Sharkey, he is not an easy guy to pass at all. Um, and we, we saw it, I remember back, Jack, back at the 12 hours of Snetterton uh, when uh, Carl seemed to keep Austin Greatrex behind him for about an hour. But Ryan Parkins, well, he might be oh, providing a sterner challenge. They head down towards Ack, down to Revaza. The double left-hander, Ryan has a little look. Carl defends. But Ryan's going to be, as you mentioned, Ryan's going to be right in the draft range. And, whoa, goodness me, we see the weave and the carbon fibre of Ryan Parkin's Porsche. So onto the long front straight they go, heading down towards Tamburello, right into top gear. And here comes Ryan Parkins. Is he going to be close enough to have a dive on the brakes? I think he might be. Down into Tamburello, Carl holds the position. Ryan goes up the inside, parks it. And this is, oh, my word. Wow. Oh, my. I thought that was a that was a crash coming there for Ryan Parkins, but he seemed to backs it in Francois Delacour style. Let's get another look at this on the brakes. He locks the brakes, and he, it's almost as if he controls a lock on the brakes. A little bit of an oversteer over the curb, no problem at all. My word, that was some good car control. It really, really was, but it hasn't slowed him down at all because now. Car Sharky, although he's got the position for the moment, how long that lasts, I don't know, because Ryan Parkins is definitely still there and definitely trying to get the position back. Now on the run up towards the double left-hander and then down towards Aqua Minerale for the seventh time of asking. Carl Sharky still leading the way. Luke Holroyd, I bet he's urging himself to speed up because he wants a good little look at this battle because he's raging away with his teammate. And I've got to say, Porsche Sport, they're in for a good... Uh, a good points finish here because they've got two cars in the top four with uh, with Carl Sharkey and Luke Holro but they've still got this battle raging away Carl Sharkey and Ryan Parkins looking from the nose of Ryan now you can see he's tucked underneath the rear wing we'll go back to a TV camera just so we can see how close he gets he touches the grass Peter and Ryan Parkins now looks up the inside has almost an overlap there and just about uh, manages to avoid a bit of contact but to see that these two drivers are this comfortable racing this close and with so much on the line and so much at stake it's great to see it's wonderful yeah and i think it just shows you again carl doing a great job to defend here uh, he's not an easy guy to pass but ryan's got the run here this time i think he's long beside him i think carl's maybe just decided to let this one go uh, and he does. So Ryan Parkins takes second position then. Next up is Matt Dorrington, but as you can see, he is well ahead. He's already coming down to the uh, Toza hairpin. And, uh, well, you, you we, uh, <laughs> spelt T-O-S-A. You wouldn't want to say that in a Cockney accent, would you, Jack? <laughs> No, you wouldn't. When I was doing a few little notes, I thought, I've got to be careful how I say that, and I've just, I've just <laughs> decided not to say it in case I, uh, I pronounce it wrong in a hurry. But uh, Matt Dorrington, well and truly in the lead. Seven seconds to the good now from season one champion Ryan Parkins. And he may have, he may have got past Carl Sharkey, but it doesn't mean Carl Sharkey doesn't want to get back past Ryan. So Ryan will be keeping half an eye on the road and half an eye on uh, on his rear view mirror. The gap has come out again a little bit to the leader. Seven 
seven seconds and a little bit now. So Ryan Parkins definitely getting slowed down. We've got battles going on in the background. Oh. No, we don't. As I click on Stuart Clark, I think he might have had a little bit of an incident with another, with another driver. Let's have a look. I think that was Mark Boa. I think there's something going on here. Let's see. Oh, gets a big old help into the uh, uh, into Piratella. Just the corner before Aquamina Rally there. And Mark Boa gives him a good old punt off the track. Um, so I don't think Stuart will have appreciated that, but uh, goodness me, this is like watching uh, Mad Max here. Look at the state of some of these cars. Amrik Sashtev's Porsche bent well out of shape. So is Mark Bowe's car, and so is Cummings there as well. Uh, as we see Jamie Ward having a little bit of a slip off. Oh, goodness me, good job he's got Michelin as a sponsor, because those, those tires will be like a 50 pence piece now. Yeah, they will jumped on the brakes, kept it out the wall, thank Blake, and made sure and he was careful rejoining. Great to see always some good sportsmanship here in the, uh, in the Porsche Club GB Sim Racing Championship. You can see Mark Bow. he's trying to keep up with Amrik Sajdev, but he doesn't want to get a little, uh, too focused on the car ahead. He needs to stay focused on the car behind him. James Cummings, you can see a change of position in the background. This is Paul Stout and Stuart Clark. Paul Stout on the outside, uh, Stuart Clark on the inside. Paul Stout tries to carry the momentum in, looks for the late apex, maybe get the cutback, but nothing prevents itself oh. through Tamburello oh a big moment for Stuart Clark car steps sideways but Paul Stout there you go up the inside but I don't think oh, well there's almost contact again this is going to end in tears I fear Peter lots of door-to-door -door action mm, yes it has that air of inevitability about it doesn't it they head down into the Toza hairpin once more and Paul Stout he's uh, he's doing well trying to keep Stuart Clark behind him of course Paul Stout running the Manti Racing, the Grello uh, livery, which has had so much success at the Nürburgring 24 hours. And actually, Manti Racing, uh, the company that run uh, Porsche's World Endurance Championship effort as well. Running a little bit further back, it's been a good day for Johnny Elia and also for Paul Riga. Paul was third in race one and he's fifth right now. So this is going to be a good haul of points for Paul Riga. Uh, indeed, and I tell you what, it's great to have Carl Sharkey back. He missed last round. He was holidaying in Italy, the uh, the lucky sod. Um, but back on the podium where he belongs today. Yeah, definitely pushing forward, but he has to be careful. Johnny Elia leading this pack from Paul Riga. There he is, then Luke Holmwood, then Mark Phillips as well, looking for another good result of 21 positions. It's been a great night so far for Mark Phillips. He just needs to hang on for another three or so minutes you can see there's been some incidents a little further around the order i think i heard it from turn one. Oh, this was the gravelly moment i think through turn one yes ouch oh he's found wow. a pink peg in the way oh dear no oh, that's that's when it puts andrew marston on his roof yeah never mind oh, being a pig more like a turtle <laughs> bouncing yeah, around a, on his roof. turtle poor old poor old andrew marston in the pink pig and uh Yep, just one of those unlucky ones. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Coming back to uh, our beloved Bernie Phillips. Uh, great run for him uh, in seventh spot. It's been a good a good meeting for him here at Imola. Um, it's a good job that he can uh, use uh, Whereby to uh, call all his friends tomorrow and tell them about how good a racing driver he is. Yeah, he's got so. Did, did you know that I'm basically a racing driver? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He can he can communicate with them in the whereby video conferencing software. He can even, given it's video conferencing in full HD quality, he can even show them replays. He can show them a picture of how fancy his car looks. Oh, the possibilities are just endless with that piece of software. They really are, well and truly, a great piece of kit. And he's looking to pick off one of the Porsche Sport cars. That's Luke Holroyd. I'm sure if uh, if Mark Phillips goes by, he will he'll be letting him know. If you want to record your podcast, do it on whereby, because um, Mark Phillips is well and truly on his way. But these two battling has slowed the cars in front. Now we've got a car in the pit lane that I fear is one of the other um, for sport machines. Is it Andrew Marston that's dived into the pit lane? No, nope. it's one of the cars. Possibly Brian Crawford. No, it was the blinds to go. Yeah, it was the blinds to go number 12 machine of Brian Crawford going for a drive through penalty by the looks of it, Peter. Hmm. Well, either that or his pit box is down at the bottom, but yes, that's an interesting one. As you see, Amri Sash... Oh. oh my word, that's a massive accident. Oh my... Wow. Oof. 
Dear me, that was unnecessary. Um, I think, was that Cummings? Yes, so uh, Amrik Sash Dev and James Cummings. So he just gets plowed out the way. Oh dear, oh dear. Poor old Amrik Sash Dev. What does he have to do? I need to give him some cotton wool to wrap around his, uh, wrap around his car. Wow. Fear in that situation, that was two cars going for the same piece of tarmac. Amri mm. leaving just enough room maybe a little less go back live riding on board with Amri and yeah like you say he's had a rotten couple of races and season one didn't really go his way either it's always the reverse grid race it either goes extremely well for him and he gets some great results or it, it just follows the same pattern that uh, it's been following this evening great car control though I've got to say through 360 degrees north of 130 mile an hour and to just put the clutch in, grab the brakes, and then let the clutch out and let go of the brakes and put your foot to the floor again. He made it look like he'd, he'd done it before, which I guess, going off season one, he probably has. But um, that car now looking very second-hand. We've got a car off the road a little bit further up. I think that's Mark Sill. We've had an incident for Shields Gardner as well. Please tell us what you see. Well, apparently. Okay. <laughs> uh, he's, Jill Gardner has gone through that corner at some point during the broadcast. Yeah. <laughs> Where's he gone? Oh, sure. oh now, 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 let's go back to Luke Holroyd because Luke Holroyd jumped the chicane there with Mark Phillips behind him. Did he? Uh, All right. I've got to try and find that. That's going to be a tricky okay. one to find because it doesn't show up. Mark Sell has apparently gone off the road. Um, it's, uh, there you, you go. go. Off he goes. slightly wide. And for some reason, my uh, my timing software has decided... It doesn't want to find any of the most recent incidents. These are all ones I think we've seen before. This is Andrew Soper going for a little bit of a run through uh, through the turn one gravel. But yeah, sorry, I can't find the incident with Luke Holroyd going off the road. But yeah, well, he basically, he just he just skipped the... Well, the, not on purpose, of course. You'd think he just lost his braking point at the Alta chicane, went straight on, and that would have given him a slowdown penalty. And that's allowed Mark Phillips to go by. So another position gain for Mark Phillips... Um, he'll, uh, I'm sure he will have uh, been able to communicate and say thank you as he went by using whereby, uh, of course. Uh, in fact, the um, the season preview video that we did a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we we did um, we used the uh, whereby software to do that, and it's on the uh, Porsche Sport YouTube page and also the Porsche Club of Great Britain YouTube page as well. So do check that out. Um, it was a lot of fun to record check it that one, there. but uh, tell you what. This man's had a lot of fun, hasn't he? Matt Dorrington, your winner then of race two here at Imola with Ryan Parkins following him home in second. So it's been the story of Dorrington versus Parkins today. Carl Sharkey gets a spot on the podium. Brilliant stuff from him, followed by Johnny Elia and Paul Riga. Strong meeting from Paul Riga as well. But I tell you what, Jack, I mean, it's uh, obviously Ryan... Uh, Ryan Parkins, the uh, winner in race one, and uh, Dorrington race two. So, uh, as you were there in the championship battle, and I feel this is just going to rattle on as all season long. Yeah, it's been a very important night for the championship rounds five and six, and Ryan Parkins and Matt Dorrington are uh, well, they've, yeah, they've literally kept it exactly the same. Matt Dorrington with a P2 and a win, and then Ryan Parkins with a win and a second place. So both drivers gaining exactly the same amount of points, but Matt Dorrington coming off a win, he might carry that extra little bit of momentum in towards rounds seven and eight in a couple of weeks' time. Lots of cars in the middle of the road. Everybody celebrating more contact. Everybody getting out, out of their system, but a very, very, very busy race for everybody involved. You can see everybody's just uh, more or less glad it's over because we knew going into Wimlow it would be a challenging circuit. And it definitely proved that this evening, didn't it, Peter? Lots of cars getting caught out here and there. And it, I never really saw it as a massively challenging circuit, but I can imagine if you put one of the most challenging cars on the service around a fairly challenging circuit, it's just a, a recipe for quite eye-opening racing. Well, un unfortunately, not everyone is uh, is blessed with the same uh, Dan Camish uh, skill behind the wheel as you are, Jack Wirral, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yeah uh, for me is this is a tricky circuit very very technical but you you're absolutely spot on the combination of this circuit and this car this car is hard wherever you go but one thing about the about the the Imola circuit is the curbs are very unforgiving indeed and this car does not like the curbs at all so 
Um, a big challenge for the drivers, and really the cream rose to the top as Matt Dorrington wins by 8.4 seconds from Ryan Parkins. Carl Sharkey on his return to PCGB action gets a spot on the podium. A great drive from the man in the number 77 Porsche Sport Machine. Fourth was Mr. Ford Transit himself, Johnny Elia, followed by Paul Ankers Riga. Mark Bernie Phillips was sixth, followed by Luke Sergeant Bash Holroyd in seventh. Mark Johnson was eighth, followed by Mark Baxter Jones and Mark Bow. Paul Stout in the Manti Racing Machine was eleventh, followed by Chris Bowie, Carl Hazelton, Stuart Clark, Oliver Carr with Dean, and finally Gilles, Gilles Gardner, Danny Jones, and James Cummings. Then we have Julian Noise, Andrew Shepard, Patrick Charlton, Jamie Ward, Andrew Soper, Amrik Sashdev, Byron Crawford, Mark Sell, Ryan Penny, and Andrew Marston in the pink pig. Rounding out our 28 strong field here today. Now, let's see if anyone would like to come in and have a chat with us, Jack Whirl. Yeah, I think we may have a couple of drivers shortly joining us in the commentary box. Sadly, nothing just as yet. I think everybody's just cooling down from what was a very busy race. We're normally joined by Ryan Parkins. He tends to get in for an interview every now and then, but a very, very, very eventful race too. And it, it more or less just follows on from what happened in, in season one, because the reverse grid race then was very busy for everybody involved. And now with even more talent and even more drivers, on uh, on the grid it just shows how uh, how competitive it can be but still for matt dorrington and ryan parkins to go from the back row of the grid to the front in a 20 minute race and keep the cars predominantly clean i noticed ryan parkins had a slight bit of damage on the front end of that car as he crossed the line but to do it that quickly and that cleanly it it just shows how talented that pairing is yeah, indeed. And, uh, you know, four laps for Matt Donington to make up 29 positions is extraordinary. And we do have some volunteers. We have we have our, our Porsche Sport podcast producer, Mr. Porsche Sport himself, Luke Holroyd, joining us in the commentary box. Or I should give him his proper name. Sergeant Bash is joining us. I've come to redeem myself. I don't think I... Uh... I'm owed that um, nickname anymore. I had quite a clean race, apart from the first race. I decided to park it in the uh, after the chicane. <laughs> um, but yeah, that track is you know, it's, it's really hard. I mean, I, I didn't have a lot of practice on it. Um, so fair play to the guys at the front. It's, it's such a tricky circuit to, to get used to. And in the 911 Cup car, as I'm sure you mentioned, it's just um, a combination of uh, getting a, a very clean lap and my time's on there today. Oh, we were very impressed with your uh, your running in race two, Luke. And uh, like you said, you've um, you've done a. I think you've done enough to put the Sergeant Bash nickname to bed for now. Uh, because a very clean race indeed in both races. But uh, we we saw you doing a bit of an Austin Powers impression in race one there, when you seemed to get stuck on the outside of the uh, Alta Chicane. Yeah, I was just I was just trying to get get out of the way because I know that it's such a tricky circuit, and when you've got crew chief saying, "Oh, someone's gone off." You, um, you're a little bit hesitant, so I was trying to just get out of the way, and then, yeah, as you know, I've only got a single screen, so I couldn't really see my turning point. <laughs> as well as I kind of floored it forward, I was like, oh, I've, um, I've kind of got myself stuck, and then started turning as if I was turning a bus, I think. But um, yeah, just hit that chicane, and for some reason dropped it down into second, and I'd, I'd always been hitting it in, in third gear, and I think in second, even just with a little bit of throttle, it just, it just flicked me out a little bit. Um, just ended up parking it. At least, at least I didn't cause anyone else any disaster, just myself. Well, we'll be able to have a full debrief with uh, <laughs> with our co-host uh, of the Porsche Sport podcast, Kat Impey. She'll be giving you some tips to avoid that happening again. Hopefully, hopefully so. <laughs> <laughs> well, brilliant stuff, Luke. Uh, while you're live here on Sim Racers World, who would you like to shout out to on the broadcast? Well, first of all, the guys at the front. Um, I think everyone knows that they, you know, they're all quick, but they all help us out through the week, and we do track walks, and you can go to them for advice. And I'm surprised none of them have come in to, to big themselves up. But Matthew, um, Ryan, Carl was up there as well, and good to see Johnny Elia battling there. You guys for doing a great job on the comms. Ian from Sim Race as well. He never gets a mention, but he does all the, the background work as well. So thanks for that, guys. Brilliant stuff. Well, thanks for coming to join us, Luke, and we'll see you next time out. See you soon, guys.
so we have we also have Jill Gardner, a newcomer to the series this uh, this season, who's with Jack Merrill. Welcome to the commentary box, Giles. Um, busy night for you, wasn't it? It's uh, quite a <laughs> yeah. It looked like um, race one went your way for the for the most part, and then a, a couple of unlucky incidents. But race two, it, it, you only seem to go backwards if you don't buy me. Yeah. Sake. It was uh, yeah, well, uh, you had your hands full. I had um, yeah, I had a little bit of an off, and and then and then just it was just getting back into a rhythm for race two and uh, race one. I just I just struggled to, to to find it and then once I did it was already halfway um, but I was happy that well I'll see it as progress as I was able to finish on the lead lap for both races um, you know got into a, you know managed to get into a consistent pace and and um, you know I did have uh, I got a little bit of coaching this week and that really helped me um, you know the track walks are helping uh, but um, I, I enjoyed that far more than I did the previous races um, and the fact you know I'm really really proud that I was able to stay on the lead lap um, uh, you know f finish numbers uh, I'm I'm not too too fussed on but um, I took that as a, as a as a big positive for me well it was a, a great performance from yourself and going off what, what you've said and obviously the track walks and the extra little bits to help would you say that getting that edge whether it be through track walks looking at guides at various places on the internet or just spending time in the car would you say that makes quite a big difference in this in this 911 cup car oh definitely because it's it's um it's not easy to come to grips with uh, sorry for the pun um but um uh, you know just getting those just extra little pieces and then um, getting to the point where you can do a consistent lap and then just reduce mistakes you're just you know finding places where you're making the mistakes be conscious of them and then knowing oh you know this has been kind of my bogey corner you know i'll approach it slightly differently um and i'll just get quicker and then i know that i can do that on a consistent basis lap after lap um you know finding a qualifying pace and then finding a, a you know a race pace um, because for, for the you know you're doing you're trying to do 20 laps not making any mistakes and to me you know I made up places once I settled into that rhythm by not making mistakes and I, I did that far better um, I think each of the each of the groups of races this this season I've I've, I've, I've done I've done better and um, you know there's only room for improvement for me so uh, I look at it that way well, it was great to see you on your way up through the order and I'm sure there are more results on their way and you will only onwards and upwards from here we've got ryan parkins in chat wishing you uh, well done and it's great uh, cheers to see yeah it's, it's i mean look if i was running at the front uh, i'd have nowhere to go so at least i've given myself some some space to improve but um, no it's been it's been really good that um you know the the sense of of uh that it's not just uh super competitive individuals um it's um individuals that are willing to give up some of their own personal time um, to share their knowledge and experience and and that's been just a fantastic experience already um, so I can I'm just going to keep uh, picking people's brains and, um, and and finding bits of time well we'll look forward to seeing that and I'm sure like I mentioned there's going to be some even better results on their way throughout the season while we've got you yeah. in the commentary box here at Sim Races World TV is there anybody you'd like to thank or shout out well um, definitely uh, Gavin and, and Matt this week um, the, the help that they were able to give me um, was uh, was really valuable, and you know I, I'm I'm just going to continue to use those uh, um, you know those tips because I don't think it's circuit specific. You know the track walks will help to give me that, but some of the other things that they were able to help me with, it, it's just going to help me to improve, and I think it's just going to be building that consistency on those on those pieces. Well, we'll look forward to seeing all the improvement as the season goes on. Thank you very much for joining us in the commentary box and once again, another well done for tonight. And we'll Cheers. see you in a couple of weeks' time. Great. Have a good evening. You too. That was Giles Gardner. And Peter, it's that time again. We've got to uh, wish everyone goodbye, but uh, albeit after a great night of racing. Oh, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure to, to call the action. And great to have you back in the commentary box for the Porsche Club of Great Britain uh, Sim Racing Championship, Jack. It's been a, it's been brilliant to call the action, and well, I mean, it's uh, what can we say? This uh, this championship battle between Ryan Parkins and Matt Dorrington, it's going to rumble all the way to the end of the season, and uh, you can watch all of the action live 
here on Sim Racers World TV. Thanks so much for watching this broadcast here from Imola, and we'll see you in two weeks' time for the Porsche Club of Great Britain Sim Racing Championship. Good night.